Welcome at this first web lecture of the course Microwave Engineering. Today we're going to talk about transmission lines. Transmission lines and microwave circuits can be found in many applications. Think, for example, about uh, uh, automotive radar, but of course also wireless communication. Not only in your phone, but also in the infrastructure. As an example, I want to show you this uh, board, which is in fact uh, a board which is used for base stations, for 5G wireless communications in the future. The board is a nice example of microwave engineering. It consists of four antenna elements. So one of these circuits is, for example, a power combiner. Another circuit you can find on this beamformer is a delay unit where MEM switches are used to switch between a short and a long transmission line. Before we can design such circuits, we have to understand uh, the basics of transmission line theory. A basic transmission line is represented by a set of coupled wires. The coupled wires can be, as we've seen in the example, a transmission line, a short microstrip line printed on the substrate with a ground plane underneath, but can take many forms. In the schematic, we re represented by a two-wire uh, set, which is connected to a source. We will assume in this course that along the transmission line, transverse electromagnetic waves can propagate, the so-called TEM waves. If you want to know more about TEM waves, please check your bachelor course, Electromagnetics. Now, it, suppose that we want to know the current and voltage along this transmission line. How can we do that? How can we solve that? Well, there are two approaches. The first one is to use electromagnetic theory, Maxwell. And the second approach is to use Kirchhoff. In this course, we're going to use Kirchhoff. But then we come up with a problem because the transmission line length can be many wavelengths long. So then how can we apply Kirchhoff because Kirchhoff assumes that we have lumped elements equivalent circuits. Now, how to do that? The trick is to use, to consider first a small piece of transmission line with the length of delta Z and delta Z needs to be much smaller than the wavelength. This piece of transmission line we can uh, model by Kirchhoff, but then how? First, we have to define an equivalent circuit that models this short piece of transmission line. The equivalent circuit consists of an inductor, which accounts for the inductance along the wire. It has a series resistance, which accounts for the conductive losses in the wires. It has a shunt capacitance, which accounts for the capacitance between the two wires. And it has a shunt conductance, which is related to the losses which might occur in the dielectric material which, uh, which can be found between the wires. Think, for example, about the microstrip example. Now, we have an equivalent circuit now. The next step is to use Kirchhoff and try to find a solution for the voltage and the currents. So, let's apply Kirchhoff and start with the voltage law. So if we walk around in the circle, we circuit, we know that the total voltage has to be zero, which means that the voltage at the input minus the voltage along the series resistance minus the voltage along the inductor has to minus the voltage at the output has to be zero. Now, the second Kirchhoff law is the current law. We can apply then the Kirchhoff current law to the output node. Then we find that the total current flowing into this node has to be zero. So that means that the current at the input minus the current through the shunt conductance minus the current through the shunt capacitance minus the current leaving the circuit has to be zero. Okay, so we now have two sets of equations. And in the first equation, you recognize the difference between the voltage at the input and the output. If you divide this equation by delta Z and assume that delta Z is very small, so we take the limit to zero, then you recognize a derivative 
And this means that we can read, write both equations into this set of uh, differential equations, where we have two unknowns, the voltage and the current, and we have two equations, so we are able to solve it. Note that we work here in the frequency domain, since we assume that all the signals are sinusoidal. So our next step is to look into the telegraph equation and try to find solutions. Well, from the basic courses in mathematics from the bachelor, we know that a general solution of these kind of equations are exponential functions. And indeed, we can write the voltage at z uh, in terms of an exponential function related to a wave propagating in the positive z direction with amplitude v plus, and a voltage wave propagating in the minus z direction with amplitude v minus. And for the current, we find a similar relation. The parameters in this equation, gamma, uh, can be written in a real part, which is the attenuation constant, and an imaginary part, beta, uh, which is the phase constant. The amplitudes of the voltage and the current waves, V plus divided by uh, I plus, is known as the characteristic impedance, Z and can also be related to the components of the equivalent circuits that we introduced before. Now let us look at a simple application of the transmission line theory. So we have found this general solution where I introduce now also the uh, characteristic impedance. Note the minus sign in the equation for the current that has to do with the direction of the current of the reflected wave. Now, the load that we now introduced, ZL, sets a relation between the voltage and the current at the termination, at Z0. And the relation uh, is that ZL is equal to the voltage divided by the current. And if we substitute simply Z0 in our general solution for the voltage and the current, then we find this relation between ZL and the characteristic impedance. Using this relation, we can rewrite it in order to find a relation between the voltage amplitude of the incident and the reflected waves. And from that, we can define the reflection coefficient, gamma, which is the amplitude of the reflected voltage wave divided by the amplitude of the incident voltage wave. And gamma depends only on the characteristic impedance and the load impedance. So the reflection coefficient is an important parameter in a lot of microwave circuits, and it's often expressed in decibels, in dB. Some examples. So for example, a short, that means that ZL is zero. If we substitute that in our equation for gamma, then we find that the reflection coefficient is minus one. So Everything is reflected with a phase of 180 degrees. We can also use an open, then ZL is infinite, and we find that gamma is one. So also everything is reflected, but then with phase zero. If we terminate it with a load, then of course we have a reflection coefficient of zero. And this is often seen, of course, as the most optimal situation. In summary, we have introduced transmission line and seen that they can be seen as uh, distributed networks. We can use the Kirchhoff's equation to come to the telegraph equation. We solved it and we've shown that if you terminate the transmission line with the load, um, you can introduce the reflection coefficient as a parameter for the quality of a microwave circuit. So thanks again for joining this first web lecture and I hope to see you back soon.